Welcome, everybody, to another OSPO working group. I am uh, Gary White. I'll be facilitating this. Uh, seems like it's going to be a bit of a short session today. Uh, the only agenda item that we have up is the insight guides. We talked about this a little bit last week where uh, Chaos wants to publish some guides to interpret metrics around a particular learning goal. And so we have this GitHub repo set up to uh, focus around particular topics that folks might be interested in. I see that somebody has commented to try to take security, it looks like. Don is already working on contributor risk and responsiveness. So uh, if any of these interest you, or if you want somewhere to start to see whether or not they'll interest you, the responsiveness one way at the bottom there uh, is being worked on and is a good place to start if you're looking to see how you might uh, work on it. Yeah, the work in progress document there. And there's some creative freedom here in terms of as long as it fits within the general guidelines, then uh, be a little loose with the content. But there's all of these topics and we're looking for volunteers, if anybody's interested to get involved. So any folks, uh, I know this is a small contingent, so I don't mean to put you on the spot, but are any folks interested in uh, getting involved in this effort? Going once, <laughs> going twice. I'll That's definitely right. take a, I'll definitely take a look at the repo and uh, read read through what what things are and uh, cool. comment appropriately. So, absolutely happy to appreciate that. Look. Yeah, anything um, doesn't have to be right now. Just if you were interested, uh, we could put you down. But feel free to peruse these at your leisure. They are available and linked from the doc uh, meeting notes. Yep. And there's down, uh, I'll find it here. We have these as well. Okay. Which are kind of like, but well, they're, they're what they say they are. They're the responsiveness ones that you had talked about, Gary. The template just to get started for an insight guide. So you don't have to copy the whole thing and then erase everything. And then I think Don had just kind of put this together to kind of summarize what you were talking about, Gary, just what are the insight guides mm -hmm. and why we want them. I'll say when we were in FOSDEM, we had talked about the insight guides a little bit. And I do have a question for you, Gary, as well. Um, we talked about the insight guides a little bit, and they seem to be kind of leaning towards helping folks, say, in OSPOs who may not want to do simply um, software installation or they may just they may not want to get down into the data all the time but they just want to have an understanding of how to approach particular topics like diverse leadership or responsiveness and the guides are really meant to be more of that narrative form as to how you might think about uh, say responsiveness and if you look if you're not familiar with the guides if you look closely they're kind of written as to how you might go about identifying those trends. And if you kind of go further down, like what do you do towards these trends? So in your organization, if you were thinking about responsiveness and you're seeing particular patterns, how do you go about responding to those patterns? So if you're seeing say lags and responsiveness in the communities that you care about, what do you do <laughs> in your company? So that's really what these guides are meant to be about. And so when Gary was talking about the latitude that comes with writing these, naturally they're going to come from the author's perspective, whoever that author might be. Um, and then kind of how you would then continue to monitor the results. That's that step five based on your interventions. So when you're in your OSPO and you're seeing there are things that you want to see, say around responsiveness or security, you're seeing trends that you may not like, you may need to, to intervene to some degree, and then how you go about continuing to monitor that. So it's just kind of telling that whole story. The intention here is to help others uh, think through these things as well. So yeah, a lot of latitude. And, and also, as a group, we're not asking you to write the whole thing by yourself, <laughs> to which... Uh, you know, we would then give a thumbs up or thumbs down is to really just kind of get it off the ground and then collectively write about these. 
Um, Gary, one had come up, which was around the viability metric model stuff. I'm not sure mm -hmm. how, if you want to think about that or if those viability metrics yeah. are in fact guides themselves, you know, like, I That's, don't know. It's a, it's a good question. I think, um, especially as I'm working with the metrics model group to come up with like a much smaller slice of viability, uh, we'll be able to contribute a guide up there because I'll get some practical experience actually working with that uh, metric. Okay. So the model would be more of the, the technical implementation and the guide would be like, all right, now I have this data. What do I do with it? Yeah, exactly. Like getting the practical experience of like, hey, this is what we're, you know, obviously anonymized and we're not going to say this is, these are the repos that Verizon cares about, but we could, we could definitely give better insight that way. No, that makes sense. I, those came up as just because they're pretty, we talk about them a lot, the viability mm. metrics models, and people seem to resonate with them highly, and it might just be really valuable to have a guide around them as well. Yeah, I totally agree. I think uh, there's a path there. It's just I, I wouldn't do it right now because there's this extra step of making them slimmer. Yep, that's all good. Matt, for any of these guides, are you also looking at beyond the data that's gathered directly by the project? Are you, are you also looking at suggestions and insight for like other other sources of external validation of the results that you get. Um, I, I'll I'll give an ex I'll give one example. So for popularity, I could imagine counting parts of the repo itself, right? Uh, number of contributors, mm -hmm. number of stars, number of like, yep. digits, sorts of things. But also, you might be informed by external measures of popularity like mm -hmm. funding rounds or surveys or other stuff that you can't see from looking at the repo itself but is still really really relevant how, how would you suggest balancing those two sort of sources of like quantitative information and like external qualitative information yeah, sure. So um, I had a different response until you added that last sentence, but <laughs> so the, the quantitative and qualitative information. So I think the, the guides are really intended to um, say, you know, like what are the, the two to three metrics, no matter where they are, whether they're internal, like, or I should say within the repository or beyond the repository, what are the two to three metrics that might um, be most useful in trying to understand popularity? So just get people off that that square of just trying to understand popularity. I don't think it really matters whether or not they're, again, within the repo or external to the repo. Um, the guides themselves, too, then do, Dawn has, so she kind of has, with responsiveness, these happen to be within the repository. Right. Um, she does have, I think, if I scroll down, here are... This is this, like, here are other areas you might to want to look as well. So the intention of the guides is to not overwhelm people, but just get them rolling. So I don't know that I worry too much about the internal or the external component of it, and whether it's quantitative or qualitative data. You're just looking for a, a top of, if if this is something you care about, here are some metrics that should be top of mind yep. as you explore this topic. Yep. It won't and be exhaustive and it won't be correct. comprehensive, but you'll go from zero to, you know, to more. something to, to not, not zero. And then I'd also say too, if like in the case that Don is showing here with respect to responsiveness, these happen to be metrics that we've published in chaos. If there's a metric that we have not published yet, which is, I mean, we have 90 or something, but it's quite possible that we haven't. I would honestly just say, just you go ahead and put down what you think that metric can be, and we can help do the mapping to an existing chaos metric or do the 
relatively quick development work to just specify, just to define what that metric is. We've tried to reduce the amount of effort that that takes. And our intention is to actually not have you do that development, but we have kind of another group that would right. kind of start that for you, probably bring it back to you and be like, is this what you're thinking? <laughs> you know, is this a description? Right. So that it's not intended to be kind of a rabbit hole for you where <laughs> you start the guide, and then you th need three new metrics and you have to go develop those three new metrics. And then, you know, it's it's not meant to be like that for you. So I would suggest just think about what those metrics would be in the case of say popularity. Okay. Okay, cool, thank you. That was a lot of great extra stuff there, Matt. Thank you so much for jumping in. Mm -hmm. um, are there other topics, other things that while we have a couple more folks in the call, anybody would like to discuss? Because uh, otherwise, this is, a, this is a short one. This is a speedy meeting. I I had one. Mo, you came off mute, so you go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm just new. Just looking to Hi. see how I can help. Hi, Mo. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, uh, while we were just talking about the insight guides, if you're interested in getting involved, uh, feel free to take a look at the meeting notes and poke through um, the template. The responsiveness guide there is is pretty close to being done. Don has been working on that for a while. And then you can look through the rest of the topics that we're looking for people to contribute to, just kind of drive the, the starting point and be able to lean on the community to get over the finish line. That's one way to get involved. Cool, thanks. I think the, the hope here is more that like in OSPOs, folks have thought about these things or have have approached them before. Mm -hmm. I really believe that the guides are just meant to try to capture that and help others who might want to think about organizational works, but just never have thought about it before. It's just a, a way to get people kind of in the right mindset. All right, Matt, you, I think you said you had a... Yeah, um, I had one. Oh, Emma, you went off mute. I was going to ask you a question, Emma, but you go ahead. Oh, um, yeah, I had a very simple question, but... Go ahead. Um, has anyone used the um, repo linter to evaluate their GitHub repositories? Uh, it's in the to-do group, so certainly don't start making a bunch of sounds behind me. Um, I'll, I'll drop a link. It's just something that um I'm not I think it some of the things that it can produce hit a number of metrics I'm not sure I'm very unprepared with this question um but it's just something that we might experiment with and I know that also we kind of <clears throat> maybe this is your next question Matt like trying to do something across different OSPOs I know that I think um, Gary doesn't have the time and I I think for like a, a metrics model, I, I don't have the time to kind of do something really in depth like that, but I'm just trying to think about what we could do. Like, this is something that we're, that I'm looking at doing, maybe we're looking to experiment with, maybe there's others that would want to experiment with it, but it's very open-ended. So Remy, looks like you have. Uh, so I, hi, I, I'm new too. Um, I I haven't been to one of these group, groups before, but uh, I work in the uh, the OSPO at at Analog. And uh, to answer your question, Emma, we we are using Repo Linter. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show the results because uh, they're pretty bloody. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, the, some of the stuff we're checking on is like if a repo has a license file, if it has a README file. Um, the, you know, all of the different files that you would expect the standard open source repo to have, we, we're checking to see if those things are there. Um, and some other things like, you know, we're checking for if there's binaries in there, um, if it's got some uh, continuous integration stuff set up. So um, there's a wide range of things that we're trying to do. And um, I don't know if that gives you any ideas or if that helps. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> Thank you. Remy, did you say you were using it too? Your 
you're muted if you're saying something. If not, you gave a thumbs up, so I'm going to assume, yeah. Yes, finally got the mute button here. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm I'm looking for our repo linter.json. I know I committed it to GitHub somewhere in our org. It's not in our .github directory. It's probably in the repo scaffolder folder. But, um, yeah, we have a repo linter currently that we're uh, – that we've been experimenting with. Same thing as a previous speaker on the call, just checking whether or not certain files exist. Uh, currently, we're working on mapping each of uh, our maturity model tiers to a repo linter JSON so that we can run like, okay, this is a working in public repo. Here's the repo linter for that versus this is a one-time release repo. Here's the repo linter for that. Um, we like repo linter a lot. I've been watching it develop at the to-do group for a few years. Um, I'm trying to find the uh, link to our config so I can share it in the chat. I think I got it, but, uh, you know, one app at a time here on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, Remy. That's really cool that you're using those different kind of cohort type or categorization. Um, that's cool. Thank you for sharing that. So Emma, was your, so this, it may be related to my question I was going to ask for you, to you. So kind of a while back, there was talk about taking a look at um, one particular metric model or set of metrics. Is that kind of this, that maybe that's not so appropriate anymore? And Well, no, I, I guess I, I don't want to say that. Um, I, okay. I, I think that there was lots of interest across the board in doing across re of the cross ospo um effort to evaluate a metrics model or metric and then originally i think the viability was suggested and yep. i think gary just was maybe taking on too much i don't speak for you gary because i wasn't there when you had the call but i would understand if that was the case certainly i have to watch my enthusiasm too and i couldn't lead it okay so maybe the next question is like do we pare it down somehow? And is something like this a way to pare it down? But I, you know, I know I, it would have to, whatever it is, if the enthusiasm remains, it would need, everyone would need to feel like, yes, we can sign off on this. And um, if it was one thing like this, then I can potentially lead it. Like if we're already working on it. Um, it's just, if it's bigger, I can't. And I, you know, I feel bad because I really want to, but this is me being self-caring. So. Yeah, yeah. No, it, makes, it totally makes sense. Yeah, so I still really want to do it though, and I'm like, well, maybe we're going to be experimenting with this anyways. Like maybe this would be something, but you know, I'm sure someone else could equally propose something that we everyone would raise their hands to as well. So I don't want to dominate the what it is. Um, what might be helpful is that if several folks are using repo linter and maybe more on this call or others that we could have a discussion about how repo linter is um, supporting the work that you're doing to understand the repositories that you care about. That's, I, I, at least from my perspective, that's something that's already implemented perhaps in a couple different places and there would be less work about doing the implementation and more about the evaluation of the outcomes. Mm, yeah. And that or might be or the application of like Remy was saying. Yeah. Like, different linters to different types of repos. That was interesting. Yeah. And that might be, at least from a process perspective, more helpful right now to talk around one particular thing and maybe down the road. It's about the deployment, say, of the viability metric model, which would take a little bit more work because that requires some implementation components. Yeah. Yeah, and at one one thing I want to insert about the metrics model thing is that it's uh, also feels like we have a working group at Chaos specifically for metrics models, like the metrics model working group. So yeah. I I decided to take that conversation and the work that I am doing there rather than a lot of coordination and taking up oxygen in this meeting to talk about something that is also suitable if, if folks are interested in doing metrics models and working with them yep. uh, in that other working group. Where like we can, I think it's worth checking in to see uh, how repo linter is doing if anybody's using it and what we've been learning uh, to have like a really low touch, just kind of 
is that going anywhere? How have people been doing with it? That feels appropriate for this because it's a to do, um, you know, OSPO project. So could I, that's all very good. So maybe I'll ask a question, Emma, why are you using repo Winter at Microsoft? Um, well, we're not, um, <clears throat> so we are const we are constantly rolling out and enforcing repository standards. And we have like an effort, an ongoing effort to reach like high bars for each of our standards, which is are a number of things related to, um, you know, like CI/CD and permissions and all those types of things. And um, this just is another way that we can hold repositories to a higher bar. Um, and you know, and I guess that's under things like relevance. I mean, we we have run out. We we did run a um, last year, I think, around the security file, but that was like an independent effort for just the security file and, and that was successful, but maybe something like this keeps us more operational around the the um the standards of repositories and thinking about different types of repositories like Remy did. We're definitely I think Jester might be on the call who creates the cohorts. We the we look at repositories in a cohort fashion. So I know that answered your question. I'm def we're definitely like the hmm, how can this help us with our standards efforts phase and I think it will. That that's exactly why we we rolled it out too. Yeah. So are the are the standards just or the standards kind of this? I, I guess I'm not familiar enough with repo linter to to I, I, like what are the standards that you're trying to hold a repo yeah. to? Um, I am literally just figuring that out ourselves. Okay. So we have some yeah. some good ideas, but I I can't answer it like. That we have a final decision, but it seems like there's a few things that could be. I mean, existence of files, um, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, binaries, whatever the. There's a few different things, and maybe. I mean, it's also how we use the repo linter too. I think is a question. Like, is it specific? Yeah, for specific sure. Specific to one thing, or are we gonna look for like a more like pattern. I don't, I don't know. I'm learning. So I think that's also why I love learning with other people. It's like, Ooh, what, what did you do? And like, how did that work out? So I don't have a, a clear answer yet. Yeah, I think at some point we were looking at eventually when the, when the process is really mature and we've got the tools tightly integrated that like, yeah, it would have to pass a repo linter audit before it could be released as open source. So we we were we were looking at putting it in a tool chain as well. So you know, at a minimum, had to have you know a license and a contributing and maybe even a security uh, file before it could be released as open source, at least automatically. So so it was part metrics, you know, part like looking at the health of all of our repos and that, but then also we're going to use it to enforce um, yeah. standards before they're let out. So the this one that I just typed, this is it's about private repos that we're gonna move into the public. Is that right? Um, kind of as an so, yeah. So I mean, like kind kind of like all of the above, right? Like I mean, a lot some things get developed without the intention of them going in open source, yep. and then eventually they're like, actually, this could be open source, and then they so then it's better to have it all done ahead of time and had and had it thought through so, so that business decisions can be made a lot easier, you know. And is that what repo is, is repo linter looking for files? I'm sorry to ask probably very basic level questions because just the way you're talking, if you're looking for a licensing file or a contrib contributing.md or some security declaration, is that essentially what it's parsing for? Um. So, the way I, I I haven't worked at it with this specifically. Like I haven't I haven't been the one hacking on it. Um I just I get the reports and so I see them frequently. Um okay. we we've got it configured to go through our entire GitHub organization and look at all of our repos and let us know which ones have a license file, which ones have a contributing file, um, which ones have security, communication, you know, XYZ, right? And um 
the, so that's based, that's mostly what we're using it for at this point. Um, and then we get, and then I don't think Rebo Winter itself will do, like, okay. I think we, I think we want to configure it to like send an alert. So like, Hey, if you don't have a license file, add one, um, is, is kind of one of the, one of the use cases we, we discussed. Um, what the, it's got a fairly customizable rules engine as well. Right. So like just looking at the rules page on there, right. Like you can check for notice files. If a directory exists, file contents, it says file existence. Um, if the hashes are not there, I can check for broken links. It looks like, um, it can look at get commits, the git log, um, the working tree. So like, so there's a lot of different things. You can check for large files. It looks like, um, so I, I think there's there's a lot of opportunity there to use it for different things. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I just downloaded and ran it across one of the repos that we manage. Uh, so install time is measured in seconds rather than days or hours, which is a big deal because I've seen some other tooling coming from some other groups that is a bear to install and this is not bad. Um, and the default rule set is not the only rule set that you would want to use, but if you do use the default rule set, it will notice interesting things. So, um, you know, five minutes of experience with this tool and I'd say, yeah, everyone should take a look at it and throw it against the stuff that they maintain and throw it against the stuff that other people maintain that they care about and see what it notices. And Remy, I did see your comment too about the existence of files. Okay. Um, to me, it seems pretty straightforward why you why you might be drawn to repo editor. Um, Emma, I don't know that we, that necessarily answers your question about how you go about deploying it. And I was uh, just curious how others were using it. This is amazing start, and you're all wonderful. Um, and you know, it, I'm just saying it's something that that in the next month or so we'll be experimenting with. So, yeah, thank you. Um, maybe this would be a follow-up question and kind of for folks and maybe not now, but like how you go about dealing with the data that you have or how you go about kind of deploying it. But I think this is an interesting conversation. So agreed. Thanks for the feedback, everybody. Yeah. And and then a, even another level on top of that is how if, as an also working group, would we eventually share data? We probably can't sometimes, but like what is the threshold of... <laughs> So we could help each other at some point. I don't know the answer, but I think it's an interesting question. Yeah, like uh, definitely sharing practices and whatever code is in the open, I think would even just be a fun exercise to see people get a little more into the specifics of how it's working. All right, I'm done. All right, those were the questions I had. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, thanks, Matt, so much for guiding that conversation and taking so many notes. Um, are there any other topics, any other things folks would like to chat about while we have all the whole cohort, cohort together? Okay, going once, twice, gone. All right. Uh, we're going to call this one early. It is 1234. Thank you all so much for coming to the uh, Chaos Ospo Working Group. We'll see you again in two weeks. And in the meantime, feel free to follow up on Slack. Bye-bye. Later, everybody.